Well, good morning and happy Easter. He is risen. We had such a tremendous time together on Good Friday, and uh, I want to thank Clayton Denton, who uh, directed it, and Esther ben Haddam, who helped out, and our, our team from Spirit of God who acted, and the worship team, right? They did a great job. So grateful this morning that Eagle's Nest uh, Fellowship is with us, Worship Center is with us today, a lot of these singers. I want to welcome my, my dear friend, Pastor Don Clark, his wonderful wife, Tiffany, their three daughters, they're here this morning. God bless you, Don. Thank you. And, and Don is going to be here next week. How many of you love it when Pastor Clark comes to speak? So we're going to look at the Easter story from two versions. First is in Matthew. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew 28. If you don't, that's okay. We're going to read it up here on the screen. That's what I'm going to do. Matthew 28. I'm going to read six verses. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. And there was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. And here we go. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Seven words. Seven of the most powerful words ever spoken. Seven words that changed the world forever. Seven words that changed our lives forever. He is not here. He is risen. We're talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, of course, when we say those words. And since the resurrection, through all these years and all these centuries, the world has debated, did it really happen or didn't it? Matter of fact, the greatest attack on Christianity today is about the resurrection. Did it happen? Because, see, if Jesus really rose from the dead, Christianity is real. But if he didn't, Christianity is nothing but a fairy tale. I'm sure most of you have heard of a man named Harry Houdini. Harry Houdini was the greatest, probably the greatest magician that ever lived. But actually, he was much more than a magician. Harry Houdini was an escape artist. He escaped from everything. And back in the 20s, the 1920s, he was the biggest thing out there. He escaped from everything. They sealed Harry Houdini in coffins. They sewed him up in canvas bags. They locked him up in safes. They locked him up in high security prisons, Scotland Yard. They put Houdini in Scotland Yard one time. And then sometimes what they would do is they would take him and put him in a straitjacket, it's true, and the people would be all around the river and they would drop him into freezing cold rivers. But Harry Houdini always escaped. Well, one day, speaking about his death, to his wife, here's what Harry Houdini said to his wife. He said, if there's any way out, any escape, I will find it. I will make contact with you on the anniversary of my death. That's what he said to his wife. Well, in October of 19, 
26, death laid its hands on Houdini as a very, very young man, and Houdini would never escape. Now his wife, for 10 years, on the anniversary of Houdini's death, would light a candle and put it at the bottom of his picture, hoping that Houdini would be true to his word, that he would surely come back from the dead, just like he escaped all the other things that had happened to him. But after 10 years, Harry Houdini's wife blew out the candle, turned out the light. Houdini was not coming back. Death had laid its hands on Harry Houdini, and he would never escape. But over 2,000 years ago, death laid its hands on Jesus. And death laid Jesus in the grave. And the devil and his angels on that Friday had a big party, man. There was all kinds of stuff at that party. And they were celebrating the fact that Jesus was dead and he wasn't coming back. But that was Friday. But Sunday morning. Aren't you glad there's Sunday morning? Come on. On Sunday morning, Jesus rose from the sleep of death. He left those grave clothes behind. Death could not hold him. And he rose from the dead. And he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is risen. I'm telling you, Easter changes everything. Amen? It does. But the resurrection for some is not, it's not an easy sell. See, a lot of people don't believe in the resurrection. Even Christians, sometimes, we go through funky things in our life. And even we kind of doubt the resurrection every now and then. I mean, because the resurrection's supernatural. It's hard to believe in supernatural things, right? Right? It's hard to believe. Now, if you have trouble believing in the resurrection, you're not alone. The Bible says that his brothers didn't believe in him. His brothers didn't believe in Jesus. The Bible talks about another place. It says that even though he did miraculous things, they still didn't believe. The disciples doubted him. They had been with him for three years. But in that last week of Jesus' life, you know the story. One of them betrayed him. One of them denied that he even knew him. All of the disciples doubted him to the point that on Thursday night in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus was arrested, they all scattered. They doubted. But you know, Jesus made some outrageous claims when he was on earth. Come on, let, let's get real here. He said some outrageous things. One time, he said, I'm God, I think Matthew uh, read this, I'm God, I'm the only way to heaven. I'm the resurrection and the life, and he who believes in me will live even though he dies. Really? It's outrageous. Now, now, take yourself out of where we are today. Put yourself back then, and this guy is saying these things. And one time, he said, hey, listen, I'm going to die and you're going to kill me, but in three days, I'm going to rise from the dead. How do you, how do you deal with that when you're back then? How do we deal with that now? It, it's outrageous. It's supernatural. And either Jesus was crazy and goofy, or he really was the son of God, and that's what I believe. He was the son of God, but, but some have a, have a hard time with that. So I love the story about Mary Magdalene. 
We're going to go take a quick peek here at what happened to Mary Magdalene. And this is the Gospel of John's version of that Easter morning. And again, we're going to John 20. It'll be up on the screen. I'm going to read a couple verses from John 20. We're going to take a look at what happened to Mary Magdalene on that morning. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. And she ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. I, I love that. Of course, John wrote this, and he has to point that out. And she said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. Verse 11, Mary was standing outside the tomb crying. And as she wept, she stooped and looked in. And she saw two white-robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angels asked her. I love this story. It, it's a great story. Why was Mary crying? Do you ever wonder? Let me tell you, Mary was filled with hopelessness. She came to that tomb that Sunday morning. She was hopeless. She didn't believe that Jesus was alive. But, but let me say this to you. Hopelessness doesn't leave the door open for miracles. Hopelessness doesn't leave the door open for supernatural things. And the resurrection is supernatural. Maybe you don't know a lot about Mary Magdalene. The Bible tells us that she was, before Jesus, she was demon-possessed. She didn't have one demon. Man, she had the mother load. She had seven big demons. She was really demon-possessed. That was before she met Jesus. And before she met Jesus, Mary lived in torment. She lived in despair. But let me, let me tell you, Mary Magdalene became one of the most faithful disciples of Jesus. We know that on Good Friday, she was at the cross. We know that she was there. We know that Mary Magdalene came to Jesus' tomb on Sunday morning. We know that she came to anoint his body. Her life had been changed by Jesus. Before Jesus, she was depressed she was living in despair. She was demon-possessed. But after she met Jesus, she realized what real joy was. She experienced peace. She experienced hope. And you know what? Mary saw Jesus change hundreds, if not thousands, of lives. Jesus was so real to Mary. Surely Jesus was the Messiah. Ah, but she saw him crucified. She saw the spear go into his side. She saw them take his lifeless body off of the cross. And then she comes to the tomb. And his body's not there. Someone has taken his body, she said. We read about that. Her mind just couldn't get around the fact that he was really alive like he said he was going to be alive. And hopelessness is like that, right? She was so hopeless. Hopelessness doesn't leave the door open for miracles. Hopelessness doesn't leave the door open for supernatural. And the resurrection is supernatural. Maybe that's where you are this morning. You showed up for this Easter Sunday service and we're singing, he's not dead, he's not dead. And these, these, these people are, are raising their hands and saying hallelujah and there's this big, and it's sunshine outside. It's this great thing. We're here this morning. But maybe you came in this morning just like Mary, hopeless. Maybe your life was going well for a while and, and maybe it's not going so well anymore. You know what I'm saying? I won't ask for a show of hands. Maybe your life hasn't gone well for a long time, but you're here this morning. And just like Mary, you're crying. 
Oh, you're not crying on the outside. You're crying on the inside. You're hopeless. Your faith has been shaken. And then you come here this morning feeling just like Mary felt that Sunday morning. Mary even sees angels. And she's still hopeless. Hopelessness doesn't leave the door open for supernatural. I love where this story goes, though. Here we go. 14 through 16. She turned to leave. She saw someone standing there. It was Jesus. But hear, hear this. She didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. We just saw the gardener this morning. Sir, she said, if you've taken him away, tell me where you have put him and I will go and get him. And here we go. I love this. Mary, Jesus said. Is that powerful? Mary's got an empty tomb. Mary has seen two angels in the empty tomb. She even sees Jesus, but she doesn't recognize him. How in the world did Mary not recognize Jesus? You ever read that and think, what? She was hopeless, friends. She was so hopeless. And, and, and I think we get like that sometimes. You know what I'm saying? We get so hopeless. We get so under it that we don't recognize Jesus even if he's standing right before us, right? It happens to all of us. Let's not get super spiritual. Sometimes we don't recognize Jesus. But then Jesus calls her name. Mary. I can't even imagine. Mary. And she recognizes his voice. And she looks. And she believes immediately. What's going on in your life this Easter morning? Are you crying like Mary was? Who are you looking for this morning? I want to ask you that. Who is it that you're looking for? Is it possible that he is standing right before you and he's calling your name? Is it possible? But are you looking for dead Jesus? Are you looking for Jesus who lived? Because if you are, it's hopelessness. Or are you here saying, man, I want to see Jesus who lives. Because if you're looking for Jesus who lives this morning, that Jesus, Jesus who lives is the one who changes lives. That Jesus is the one who brings us hope. But for Mary, watch this. Her hope was voice activated. Her faith was voice activated. It happens like that sometimes. Sometimes we don't see him because we're so hopeless. But it was voice activated. So maybe the question I should be asking you this morning is, who are you listening to? He's calling your name, Mary, John, Lauren, Michael. He's calling your name. Are you listening? Max Licato is a famous, uh, famous author. He writes this fabulous thing about the tomb that morning. If you don't mind, I'm just going to read it real quick. 
This is Max Lucado. He says, the women are there. They're the first to arrive at the grave early on that Sunday morning. And they have a somber task. The morning promise is one encounter, an encounter with a corpse. There was a time when they dreamed dreams, but not now. The feet that walked on water have been pierced. The hands that healed leopards have been stilled. Noble aspirations have been spiked into Friday's cross. Mary and Mary have come to a place to put warm oils on a cold body and bid farewell to the one man who gave reason for their hope. Here's Matthew's version. At this time, there was a strong earthquake. An angel of the Lord came down from heaven, went to the tomb, rolled the stone away from the entrance, and then he sat on the stone. This is Max writing. I have to ask you a question. Why did the angel move the stone? For whom did, the, did he roll away the rock? Was it for Jesus? That's what I always thought. I just assumed that the angel moved the stone so Jesus could come out. But think about it. Did the stone have to be removed in order for Jesus to exit? Did God have to help? Was the death conqueror Jesus Christ so weak that he couldn't push away a rock? Hey, could somebody help me get out of here? I don't think so. The text gives the impression that Jesus was already out when the stone was moved. It's interesting, isn't it? Nowhere in the Gospels does it say the angel moved the stone for Jesus. If not, then, for whom was the stone moved? Listen to what the angel says in Matthew's version. Come and see the place where his body was. I believe the stone was moved not for Jesus, but for the women. Not so that Jesus could come out, but so that the women could see in. The lesson, three words, don't give up. Is the trail dark? Don't sit. Is the road long? Don't stop. Is the night dark? Don't quit. God is watching. For all you know, right at this moment, he may be telling the angel to move the stone. Don't quit. For if you do, you may miss the answer to your prayers because God still, still sends angels and he still moves stones. Amen? But some of you are thinking this morning, that sounds great, but you don't understand. Oh, how I wish the resurrection was real. You know, I believe it even. I believe it, okay, but it's not for me because you don't know me. You don't know what I've done. You don't know how much I've sinned. I'm just a failure. It's too late for me. Some might be thinking that this morning, but that's the beautiful part about this message this morning. That's the most beautiful part about Easter. Do you think that Jesus died for demon-possessed Mary Magdalene and not for you? Do you think that Jesus died for Peter, the one who, who denied he knew Jesus three times? Do you think he died for Peter and not for you? Do you think he died for Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, the Apostle Paul, but before Paul wrote the New Testament, his name was Saul, and he was a terrorist who persecuted the church, put men and women and children in jail. Do you think that Jesus died for Paul and not for you? Oh, that's the New Testament dudes. How about the Old Testament? You think Jesus died for Noah? Noah, the Bible says, you know, the, the ark guy? Noah was a drunk. Moses was a murderer. Abraham, the father of Israel, was a liar. David was an adulterer and a murderer. Do you think that Jesus died for them and not for you? Hey, take a peek up here. I've sinned as much, if not more, than anybody in this room but I'm saved by grace, and so are you. <laughs> Jesus died for me, and he died for you. Easter changes everything. Easter is for all of us. And let me say this to you. Let me say this to you as we close this morning. Hopelessness doesn't open the door for miracles or for the supernatural. 
but hope does. Did you know that in the New Testament, the word hope is mentioned 71 times? 70 of those times are after the resurrection. Now, I can't prove to you that the resurrection really happened. There's no video, no Facebook posts, there's no tweets. As a matter of fact, I think there were, I don't know, 500 witnesses or so after Jesus died, before the time he died and the time he went up to heaven. And those 500 witnesses passed it on, passed it on until we here we are today. But there's no video proof. But friends, I can stand up here this morning and tell you 100% there is undeniable proof of the resurrection. And you know what it is? It's your lives. It's before Jesus and who we are after Jesus. The proof of the Spirit is the fruit of the Spirit. It's after Jesus. Look at the disciples. Before the resurrection, they were cowards. They really were. They, they, they scattered when Jesus was arrested. They were afraid of being killed. But after the resurrection, these boys turned the, 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 the world upside down. After the resurrection, they were not afraid to die. They boldly proclaimed their faith in Jesus Christ. It's because of the resurrection that the disciples were willing to suffer and even die. And by the way, 10 of the 12 died a brutal death for their Jesus. It's because of the resurrection. Easter changes everything. It's because of the resurrection that hundreds of thousands of saints even today choose to suffer and die. The resurrection is the reason Easter changes everything. I'm telling you, I said last week that this church has buried too many people in the last two years. I see a lot of visitors this morning. A lot of us have had to bury moms and dads. We've had to bury grandmas and grandpas family members. Some of us have had to bury children. But the resurrection is the reason that even though our loved ones die, we're going to see them again someday in heaven. The resurrection is the reason. Mary. Mary Magdalene comes to the tomb. She comes with spices to anoint Jesus. She comes to anoint dead Jesus. But she sees him. She recognizes his voice. She believes in the risen Christ. She came to anoint dead Jesus, but she left with an anointing. She came as a mortician, but she left as a missionary. The resurrection was the reason. It really was. And if you're here this morning, maybe your marriage is on the rocks. Maybe you're struggling with addiction. Maybe you're filled with depression and anxiety and hopelessness. But I want to I say this to you. I hope you can all get this into your spirits. Hope swallows hopelessness. We don't have to have religion. We have a relationship. Easter changes everything, and the resurrection is the reason. Amen. Because he lives, though, we can face tomorrow. He is not here. He is risen. Don't cry. Wipe your eyes. Church, say it with me. He's not dead. The resurrection is the reason. Dan, look at this cross. Take a look at it. It's my 43rd year 
as a follower of Jesus. And this Easter story never gets old to me. The cross is where my hope is. And as we close, look at that cross. And you tell me, do any of us have a good excuse to not believe, to not turn from the sin in our lives, and to not accept the one who gave everything for you. Father, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for the resurrection. I thank you for the fact that you have risen. You're alive. You take away all our hopelessness. You take away all our fears. You, you, you take away all of our anxiety, all of our despair. You change lives, Lord. I thank you for the lives here this morning that have been changed. That's evidence, Lord. Thank you that the story goes on. And it's not a story. It's real. Lord, if there's anyone here this morning who doesn't know you as the risen Christ, Lord, I pray that you move in their hearts this morning, that none would leave here this morning without believing and receiving Jesus who lives. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.